so welcome back so in the unit of public finance we have already discussed <coughs> the following topics related to budget we have covered the budget making process and the which we discussed that budget making starts from the month of september october when the ministry of finance it sends the guidelines to the spending ministries and by, then by december they send back their demand for grants by the month of february first week or second week the accumulation of demand for grants takes place by the Ministry of Finance. Finally, the budget is placed in the Parliament on the last working day of February. And then by the end of May or by mid of May, the budget is finally passed by the Parliament. Then we discuss the structure of the budget under which we discussed the budget is divided into two parts. First is receipt. Second one we have is expenditure. Again, receipt is divided into capital revenue receipt and capital receipt similarly the expenditure is divided into revenue expenditure and capital expenditure under revenue <coughs> receipts we discuss tax revenue as well as non tax revenue tax we divided into direct taxes indirect taxes non tax revenue receipts we discuss interest payments grants by some other countries then interest then we discuss the dividends and then the money by rbi etc etc we discuss gifts and all then under capital receipts we divide into assets and liabilities then by increasing the liabilities like we can borrow internal borrowing external borrowing all this thing we discuss under that receipts part then we discuss about the expenditure part again divided into revenue expenditure so in that structure we are discussing so in that revenue expenditure we discuss that the interest payment then the subsidies defense grants to state social expenditure economic expenditure disaster management all these things we already discussed and then under the capital expenditure part also we discussed giving more loans repayment of the loan all this thing all these structures we already discussed the structure of budget is highly highly relevant from exam perspective you can always expect one or two questions from this structure of budget in any exam be it ssc upsc or any exam but you can expect at least one question from that structure of budget so you have to cram that budget then we also discussed about the deficits. We discussed six types of deficits. We discussed about the budget deficit. Then we discussed about the revenue deficit. Then we have discussed about the effective revenue deficit. Then we discussed about the fiscal deficit, primary deficit and monetized deficit. And we discussed that the budget deficit and monetized deficit, the value of these two deficits is zero. <clears throat> so all these things we already discussed <clears throat> in the continuation of the same unit of public finance. Next, we are going to discuss all these topics like what exactly the data that comes in the budget then we will discuss about the types of budget that we have that zero based budgeting then the performance budget the outcome based budgeting gender budgeting all these types of budget we discuss and then we discuss the classification of budget how the budget can be classified so budget can be classified into revenue and capital these two categories is possible then also we can discuss the plan versus non-plan so this plan versus non-plan is nowhere mentioned in the constitution. It's an artificial distinction which we started from 87-88 and now recently the Niti Aayog said that this plan non-plan distinction will be abolished when this 12th five-year plan will be finished. It means by next year 2017 this plan versus non-plan distinction will be vanished. Then we will discuss about the development versus non-development expenditure which all types of expenditure comes under development, which all comes under non-development. This we will discuss. And then we will discuss something about the revenue surplus. In India, after independence, we had a revenue surplus in 1970s. Afterwards, we are in huge deficit. <clears throat> then we will discuss about some, some basic, basic idea about the budget of the state. What's the rough value of the budget of the state? What's, because we already discussed the total GDP. Then we discuss the rough value of the budget of the union government, that is, 19.7 lakh crore roughly we can say 20 lakh crores so all these things we are going to discuss in this lecture so we'll, i'll start from the <coughs> with this example the first topic these two topics this and this we already covered so i'll start with the data which comes in the budget so in suppose in for budget 2016 and 17 it means it is applicable from 1st april 2016 to 31st of march 2017 I am expecting one question from this topic. <clears throat> so this budget was tabled on parliament on 29th of February 2016. But on 29th February 2016, it comes under financial year 2015-16.
because we discussed what is budget budget is the advance planning advance in the sense on 29th april 2016 we are planning for 1st april 2016 to 31st of march 2017 it means this financial year is not yet end then this budget was passed in the month of may 2016 now this may 2016 comes under financial year 2016-17 then which types of data are provided you are uh, in the budget there will be three sets of data it means for three financial year there will be data first there will be actual figures of some financial year then we will have some budget estimates of one year and the revised estimates of the same financial year and then we have the budget estimates so on 29th 29th of february 2016 when this budget was tabled there will be budget estimates of 2016-17 then because this budget was tabled on financial year 2015-16 which is not yet over because it is tabled on 29th february so we have full one month of march 2016 which falls under financial year 2015-16 so there will be some budget estimates of 15-16 which were tabled on 28th february 2015 So last year budget. This is this year budget 2016-17. The last year budget of 2015-16 was tabled on 28th of February. So there will be budget estimates of this financial year 2015 to 2016. Now because almost 11 months are over for this particular budget, because now when we are tabling the budget on 29th February 2016, 11 month of 15-16 are already crossed. only one month of 15 16 is left so there will be some revision of this already budget estimates so the revised estimates of 15 16 will be available let me summarize it once again <clears throat> this 2015 16 11 months are over till 29th february 2016 only one more month that is march 2016 is remaining so last year we estimated some budget so that whatever was estimation that estimation will be revised so there will be revised estimates of 2015-16 there will be budget estimates of 15-16 and there will be actual figures of 2014 and 15 so on 29th february 2016 when this budget was tabled this budget was having these three sets of data for 2015-16 there will be budget estimates as well as the revised estimates for 2014-15 there will be actual figures and for 2016-17 there will be budget estimate because 16-17 is not yet started this is what the purpose of the budget is advance planning so this budget of 2016-17 is going to cover the figures or values for 14-15 actual figures 15-16 budget estimate whatever we estimated last year plus it's revision so budget estimates and revised estimates of 2015 16 and there will be budget estimates of 2016 and 17 so these three sets of data will be available in any budget future year the present year and the past year present year means because this budget is tabled on 29th of february so present year is 2015 16 so two data of 15 16 one is budget second is revised and the future estimates this sets of data is a little bit confusing but i hope that this figure is clear next what we are going to cover is the types of budget so in this types of budget we are going to cover zero based budgeting the first type of budget will be zero based budget or budgeting next we are going to cover is performance budget and third one is the outcome based budget so first zero based budgeting zero based means you are considering your base as zero so suppose you want 
in any financial year, in any budget, suppose in 2015 and 16, you have allocated, I'm giving you just a rough example, suppose you have allocated 1000 crore rupees to make any power plant. But maybe because of inflation or whatever the input cost has increased and in 2016 and 17 this was the initial outlay, this was the initial requirement to make this power plant. But suppose it increased it to 1500. So now additionally 500 crore you have to give. In case of zero based budget every year you have to do the cost benefit analysis of this particular program. It's not like because you have already invested 1000 crore in this power plant, so you will give 500 crore extra without doing any cost benefit analysis of this power plant. In case of zero based budgeting, we assume that there was no budget last year. So every year you have to do the cost benefit analysis because if this power plant is not of use, then you will not waste this 500 crore rupee. Although you have already invested this 1000 crore rupees, but there is no point of wasting 500 crore extra because now you have realized that you have already wasted 1000 crore rupees. So every year the government will do the cost benefit analysis of each and every program. And if the government thinks that this program is required as per the current scenario, they will continue it. They will again give some outlet to that project or program otherwise they will not give any any outlet to that particular program so this is what we have zero based budgeting the base is zero again the cost benefit analysis is going to take place if under this cost benefit analysis there is still requirement then only you will give the next funds otherwise the government will not give any fund to that particular program this is what we have zero based budgeting so zero based budgeting <coughs> It started in India in 1987 and we borrowed this concept from USA and this concept was given by Peter Fire, it's a very famous person. So it's a Peter Fire concept and we borrowed in India, we implemented in 1987 and we borrowed this concept from USA. So this is what we have, the zero based budgeting. So every year annually you have to justify your particular program. Then we will have the performance budget. So this performance budget is very old. It started in 1969. So under this performance budget, whatever the ministry, the ministry itself provides two, three sets of data. They will provide the quantitative objective. It's not like I want to suppose Ministry of Rural Development is saying, I want to remove poverty, please give me 1 lakh crore. No. You have to divide this 1 lakh crore into different different programs. Just like MG Narega can be one program. So whatever your objective, you have to convert your objective into quantitative terms. Then the second thing is you have to specify the programs which are required to implement this objective. So first will be quantitative objective, then we have the programs. And how to evaluate it? Whatever programs you are saying, how the Ministry of Finance can evaluate these programs? So these three sets of data is being provided by the spending ministry to Ministry of Finance. So this is known as performance budget. And annually there will be evaluation of this particular thing. Then the last or the very recent concept is outcome based budgeting which started in 2005. It is nothing but a modified form of performance budget only. Because in case of outcome based budgeting, uh, quarterly there will be evaluation. It's not annually, quarterly there will be evaluation. And I hope you already discussed the difference between outlay output and outcome. In our first lecture under the definitions we have covered the difference between outlay, output and outcome. So outcome is nothing but it is the qualitative consequence of output. We discussed with an example of that road, 
there are a lot of accidents on this road 100 crore is allocated to this particular for putting some hoardings so this 100 crore is the outlay and then output is these hoardings it itself they themselves shows this is what the output of this 100 crore rupees and then the outcome is whether actually the number of accidents has decreased or not that is what the outcome means so similarly that outcome based budgeting it started in india in 2005 so every year different different ministries they pass this outcome based budget and the outcome based budget is available on their website although not much successful because the what the ministries are doing the ministries are just copy pasting this quantitative objectives and programs under this outcome based budgeting this is what arc also criticized this thing anyways that comes under polity part so this is what we have the outcome based budget in outcome based budget the focus will be on outcome and not on output and quarterly there will be evaluation of these quantitative objectives and programs this is what outcome based budgeting then we have the gender based budgeting as such it's not a concept gender based budgeting means while framing the budget the government is giving some emphasis to the gender it means there will be some women specific programs in the budget that is what we have the gender based budgeting next after this types of budget the next topic will be classification of budget classification means how the budget can be classified so first will be revenue versus capital so this is already discussed under the structure of the budget we have the receipts part receipts divided into revenue and then capital similarly the expenditure also divided into revenue and capital under this revenue we discuss tax revenue non tax revenue under this capital we discuss asset and liability concept under that assets we discuss the disinvestment we discuss the sale of assets and we discuss the recovery of loan under this liability we discussed the borrowing internal borrowing external borrowing internal means by financial institution general public from rbi all this we already discussed this revenue includes we already discussed that interest payment we have then subsidies then we have on police administration then the grants to states then on defense then economic expenditure then we have social expenditure then on disaster management on union territories administration all this thing comes under this revenue and in capital it is just the opposite of this thing so this is what one classification this comes under revenue so this revenue versus this capital so this is what the revenue versus capital classification of budget then we will discuss <clears throat> the second classification which is based on the plan versus non plan so revenue versus capital it has been specified in the constitution that you have to classify your budget into revenue and capital this plan versus non plan is an artificial distinction which came into picture this plan versus non plan it started in 87 88 only and the reason of this classification was the plan expenditure or the grants under plan they were being provided by the erstwhile planning commission and this non plan they were given by on the recommendations of finance commission these are also known as statutory grants and these are also known as non statutory or discretionary grants so plan means which you can plan with certain degree of certainty so we have five year plans which will be abolished after this 12 five year plan so this 12 five year plan it started in 2012 it will be valid in 2017 so now because india is a planned economy under which the government plans for next five years and this plan is somehow some divided into the annual budget so what we have a big type of planning of five years then we have 
every year planning that is known as the budget part suppose this is five years then there will be annual planning that is known as the annual budget <clears throat> so plan means which you can plan with certain degree of certainty so whatever is mentioned in the five year plan is known as plan expenditure for example i think last to last year in some exam there was a question which of the following comes under plan expenditure every year there is there is some question from budget so under this we have whatever is the index of the five year plan for example in the index you will get communication so communication will come under plan you will have transport you will have rural development you can have agriculture irrigation power or energy so all these sectors they are part of this plan expenditure there is one unique thing that comes under plan expenditure and that unique thing is disaster management when the role of planning commission increased when the role of this discretionary grants increased year by year and the role of finance commission decreased year by year and that so except till this 13 finance commission till before that 13 finance commission the recent 14 finance commission the role of planning commission increased drastically because the chairman of the planning commission is prime minister now any body which is directly under prime minister will have more say or more power when they are giving the grants and this finance commission it comes once in 5 years so the role of finance commission which is a constitutional body has decreased over the years except this last 2 3 years and the role of this planning commission increased during last few decades so to give more emphasis for this disaster management intentionally the disaster management has been put under this plan expenditure because the grants given by planning commission they are giving more relevance they are giving more importance in comparison to this known plan expenditure so that is why intentionally disaster management was put under this plan although we cannot predict we cannot plan up to any degree up to any certainty we cannot predict this disaster but still the only purpose of putting this disaster management under planning under planned expenditure was because there was more grants given by planning commission so more focus will be there on this disaster management if disaster management will come under plan expenditure that is why disaster management comes under plan expenditure and what comes under non plan expenditure majority of that revenue expenditure it's like we have defense we have subsidies we have interest payment we have that economic services we have grants to union territories grants to states so all these things they comes under non plan expenditure plus unfinished project and maintenance of projects unfinished projects means suppose in any 5 year plan or in 12th 5 year plan you have assumed that i want to make 100 schools and you are not able to complete this 100 schools rather you have completed only 70 schools so that remaining 30 schools that will come under this unfinished project or suppose some buildings out of this 100 schools only the building of this 80 schools has been completed and the building of 20 schools they are still under construction so these 20 schools after 2017 till 2017 they these schools they were considered under this plan expenditure but after 2017 these remaining schools they will come under this non plan expenditure plus the maintenance part also the maintenance part means now you have to maintain these 100 schools or the total completed schools so their maintenance will now come under this non plan expenditure it means they will not get any grants from the erstwhile planning commission 
because of this reason only the maintenance of indian projects or the projects in india was not good because the maintenance comes under non plan non plan under the non plan expenditure which was on the recommendations of the finance commission and they were getting less funds so that is why the focus on maintenance or the focus on unfinished projects was less and the, the grants given by planning commission was more so the more focus was there on all these projects in comparison to this one so this is what the next classification and under plan <coughs> the plan expenditure of 2016-17 is 14 lakh crores and the non plan expenditure will be 5.5 lakh crores i think it's vice versa it's it is plan is 5.5 lakh crores and non plan is 14 lakh crores this is correct so next classification will be development versus non development so under this development versus non development first we'll discuss what is development and whatever remains is known as non development so if directly some expenditure is being incurred for the development purpose that is known as development expenditure Development means any expenditure on social and community services. Or any expenditure on economic services. That is known as development expenditure. Under the social and community services, what comes is on us. For example, we can have family planning, we can have education. So all this family planning, we have education. We have schools. All these things we comes under the social and community services. And then under economic services, what comes under is known as remaining agriculture, irrigation, industries, minerals. So all these things which are directly related to the development, these are known as development expenditure. And what comes under non-development expenditure is the remaining, whatever we have, the interest, expenditure to maintain law and order or we can say the general administration we can have pension we can have salary all this thing comes under non development expenditure so this development non development plan non plan revenue capital all these are not mutually exclusive there will be distinction between revenue and capital and there will be distinction between plan and non-plan, development and non-development. But there can be some chances that this development is very much similar to this plan or this development can be similar to this capital. So these are not mutually exclusive. These are just the artificial classification. Plan versus non-plan and development versus non-development. These are the artificial classification. In the constitution, only this distinction is mentioned. Revenue versus capital expenditure and receipts it should be separate it should be distinguished only this thing is mentioned in the constitution so this is what we have classification of budget then we will discuss about the revenue some history of indian budgeting so 1950s <coughs> revenue expenditure And then revenue receipt nineteen fifties, fifty fifty one, we can say, and two thousand sixteen seventeen. So nineteen fifty fifty one, the revenue receipt was only three fifty crores. 
द रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर वॉज फोर हंड्रेड करोड एंड इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटीन एंड सेवेंटीन द रेवेन्यू रिसीड्स विच इज डिवाइड इन टू टैक्स वर्सेज नॉन टैक्स इज थर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव लैख करोड एंड नाउ दिस वन इज सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव लैख करोड in in till mid 1970s the difference the revenue deficit or we can say there was revenue surplus till mid 1970s in india and whenever we already discuss the revenue deficit concept revenue deficit means it is the worst type of deficit it means the government whatever the government the expenditure of the government is more than the means of the government it means the collection of the government is less and the expenditure of the government is more which means either i am decreasing my assets or increasing my liability or we can say the future liability and these both these two things decreasing my assets or increasing my liability both these concepts are negative that is why the revenue deficit concept should be abolished the value should be zero till 1970 there was some revenue surplus but after 1970 there is a huge deficit at present it is 3 lakh crores so there is a revenue deficit of 3 lakh crore in india at present then after this thing the last topic of this session will be budget of states so there should be i want to give you some rough idea about the total outlay of all the states combined so we discuss suppose this is what the gdp of india is so in detail this gdp has been covered under the microeconomics so under this gdp the rough value of indian gdp is 2.1 trillion dollar which is roughly equal to we can say some 130 135 lakh crores it depends on current price or constant price but suppose 130 lakh crore is the total gdp out of which we discussed that the budget is of the union government budget is of 20 lakh crores and what is the say of the state budget again state budget will be divided into revenue and capital so under this budget of states first will be revenue so revenue receipts will be there and revenue expenditure will be there in case of capital also capital receipt will be there and capital expenditure will be there <clears throat> so the total revenue of all the 29 states combined is 18 lakh crores <clears throat> and roughly it is same the receipts will be 18 lakh crore and the expenditure is a slightly more than 17 lakh crore it means what it means at the level of state there is revenue surplus this you have to remember that at state level there is a surplus at revenue in case of union government there is a deficit of 3 lakh crores but in case of the states combined 29 states there is a surplus of almost 50000 crore <coughs> under the head of revenue and then we have the capital so capital receipt and expenditure is almost same it is 4 lakh crore and it is 4 lakh crore so roughly this revenue is 18 lakh crore this capital is 4 uh, lakh crore so this is 22 lakh crore is the planning of states this is what the advance planning about the budget outlay and this is what of the union government and the rest will be of the private sector so this revenue receipt of this 18 lakh crore is again comes from tax and non tax just like in case of union government that 13.5 lakh crore is the in case of union government the revenue receipt we just discussed it is 13.5 lakh crore 
out of this 13.5 lakh crore we discuss something from tax and something from non tax this we discuss in under the structure of the budget the tax was roughly 10 lakh crore it was more than 3 lakh crores <coughs> similarly in case of states the revenue is 18 lakh crore out of this revenue receipts of 18 lakh crore something will come from tax and something from non tax you don't have to cram this figure but some rough idea some basic idea you should have it's like suppose in the exam they ask that <coughs> the revenue receipts of the states the combined states is more than the revenue receipts of the union government then this statement is correct so such type of question can be asked in the exam i'm not expecting the factual questions in the exam so this tax collection is 13 lakh crores and the non tax is 5 lakh crores so under this tax some types some types of tax we'll discuss this types of taxation in the next lecture so states majorly states collect that sales tax then some type of excise duty is being collected by the states then the professional tax being collected by the states on agriculture income the tax is being collected by the states so some of its some of the taxes this this tax is being collected by the states so their own tax is 8 lakh crore and some tax is being devolved by the union government this we will discuss under finance commission that finance commission this we discuss right that the total tax collection was 15 lakh crore by adding CIT, PIT, custom, excise service, it was 15 lakh crore. But we discussed that under union government budget, there will only be 10 lakh crore because some tax is being devolved by union government to the state government on the recommendations of the finance commission. So devolved funds, devolved taxes is 5 lakh crores, the same one. Similarly, in case of non-tax revenue receipt, there will be grants given by union government. So these grants makes 3 lakh crore and rest their own of 2 lakh crores. If you are able to cram this data, it's good. Otherwise, I'm not expecting that there will be some direct question from the from these facts. But yeah, roughly, roughly they can ask what is the rough value of the amount of tax that is being devolved by the union government. Or at least in mains exam of UPSC, you can use such data or mains exam of any state PCS, you can expect such data. So this is what we have, the budget of the states. So in the next lecture, we'll discuss about the taxation part. The taxation part will divide into the taxes of the union government and then the taxes of the state government, the types of taxes that we have, and then the direct taxes, indirect taxes, what is cess, what is surcharge, what is specific tax, what is ad valorem tax, all these things we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Thanks a lot.